Okay. Hey, this is Rick Cassells from ExercisesForInjuries.com. I got another interview for you, and I'm really excited. I got an interview with John uh, Bruni, and we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about neuromass and and a little bit about the unique training that that John does and how that unique training can help you when it comes to recovery from your workouts, but then also when it comes to gaining performance and strength goals. So John, I'll get you to introduce yourself and then we'll get into the interview. Well, Rick, it's great to be with you guys today and with your listeners and followers. And my name is John Bruni and my background is I am a performing strongman. I'm an author, a pastor, a motivational speaker, coach, trainer, kind of have done it all. And uh, we have, I'm excited because we've got this brand new product out that I believe is going to change the lives of people and that is Neuromass. Awesome, awesome. So I got I got Neuromass right here, which is, it, it, it's, a, it's a really good book. It's excellent. Now, we'll, we'll kind of go through, you know, a couple of things that really stood out, you know, when I went through the book and questions I had and questions, I think the answers that will end up helping with the readers and viewers and listeners. So one big thing that you end up using is the kettlebell. Um, maybe you can kind of explain like why you like it as a training tool for what you do and, you know, and maybe kind of talk about what your favorite kettlebell exercise is. Well, of course, I love the kettlebell because it's unique. It has a different kind of center of gravity that kind of goes all over the place. I, I put a quote in the book uh, from Mike Menser that says, anything that can make your workout harder is a good place to start. <laughs> and what's great is the kettlebell works your body harder, but it does it in a safe way. It does it in a way that only benefits you uh, as far as it's a great time saver. It works all the stabilizer muscles. It can do things for you that a normal barbell or dumbbell cannot. And so that's why I choose to use a lot of kettlebell exercises, especially when we're talking cleans. It's a lot easier to teach people a kettlebell clean than it is to do a barbell clean. Um, but with the kettlebell, my favorite exercises always start out with any kind of pressing or squatting. My ultimate favorite is the kettlebell, double kettlebell clean and press because it works so many muscles. That's my favorite grind. From the time that you have to get it to the clean position, you have to absorb the impact, and then you have to teach the body to tighten up so you can press it on overhead. And when you have that offset center of gravity, you're working all kinds of muscles. You can feel it from your ears all the way down to your toes. I love it. And then if we were to move into the more dy dynamic exercises, I really love the walking kettlebell swing. I have seen it uh, take care of people's back injuries, make them stronger in their back. It's given them more endurance, and it kind of makes the body smarter because you're having to do two things at once. You're swinging a kettlebell while walking. So those are kind of at the top of my list, but there's a ton of exercises in the book. Yeah, yeah. And one maybe one of my beefs is, and probably when, it was when I was going through my training and and learning and certification when it came to fitness and personal training there is this big discouragement or like alarm bells would sound when you do anything overhead any kind of pressing and pushing overhead now i believe that we need to do some of it and you know we might not do 100 percent of our workout all pressing overhead work but kind of like what is your thoughts when it comes to pressing overhead and in how how it's important in strength gains and also in like people's lives well, I think it's obviously important to do some kind of overhead pressing because in real life, let's take sports aside, let's take any kind of the athletic activity aside, you reach your hand up to grab things constantly. If you have to reach into a cupboard, reach up for a book, whatever it may be, you're going to find stuff like this all the time where you're having to do that. So I think it's important just to train those muscles in real life. Now, what I love about doing the overhead pressing is that it also strengthens that shoulder by using a kettlebell it puts and locks your shoulder into a safe place so that when you're going it's actually pulling the arm back and I find that it's a very safe way to press for people a lot of people that would struggle with the shearing force of a heavy dumbbell press and I've done those many many times and still continue to do them find that a kettlebell press is much more comfortable it places them into a really uh, easy what I call strength groove 
for the shoulder, making it very, very safe, but also effective. I think that it's a big shoulder builder and uh, it's just an excellent all around exercise. Awesome. I agree. I agree. And looking at the book, there was one thing that, I mean, you're, you're, you're blowing up those old school water bottle or hot water bottles. I don't even, I mean, it's so hard to find those things anymore. Now everything's electric blankets, heat blankets, mm-hmm. and you're Absolutely. blowing one of them up. And, and it's probably because, I mean, that's what you had. Uh, and I had those when I was growing up and I was looking for one, uh, one of those hot water bottle things and I couldn't find one, but you're blowing one of them up. And one of the concepts that you focus in on is this power breathing. And maybe you can talk about like how power, like what power breathing is and how it can end up helping when it relates to your strength and power. Absolutely. This is one of the most important concepts that people need to get in life in general. The way we breathe can help the body adapt to different situations, whether it's athleticism, whether it's getting geared up or calming down. And Power breathing is the exact technique I use to blow up hot water bottles. And if you can find them, they're harder and harder to find. (laughs) I never recommend that anybody does it because it is highly, highly dangerous. I've had some doctors watch me do this in shows before, and they've said that if the air comes back into your lungs, it just takes one slip and it it will kill you. Um, But the extreme pressure it takes to blow up that hot water bottle is what power breathing is all about. You're inhaling and you're expanding the abdomen, and it makes a big difference. So most people are naturally chest breathers. Um, we're not born that way, but over time, because of posture and all kinds of different environmental factors, people turn into chest breathers. So in the book, I show a simple test that they can do to show whether you're breathing from the abdomen or not. And then what happens is once you've inhaled and expanded the abdomen, what you want to do is pressurize the body and one of the ways you can do that is by simply putting the tongue against the teeth and making a, a hissing sound. And when you make that hissing sound, if you'll try it at home, you can feel all of the body tense up tightly and it prepares it for action. Uh, the best way I can illustrate it is this, is we've all had to drive and gotten a flat tire one time or not in our lives. And it's the same thing with power breathing. You know, picture the, this flat tire, picture this, this half full tire even. How far down the road can you get on just a partial breath? Now take that same tire and you fill it to the proper uh, the proper air pressure, and all of a sudden you're rolling right along. And it's the same way with strength. If you use the proper pressure, you're going to be stronger and be able to go farther in your workouts. When you are only half full, or what I call half pressurized, you're creating weaknesses and leakages and strength leakages all over the body. Cool. Interesting. Interesting. Now, another thing that you cover in the book is the isometrics, uh, you know, isomet- how important isometrics are, I- isometric strength training. And I know that is something that I really focus in on when it comes to the injury recovery uh, and pain. But I haven't really heard anyone kind of talk about it when it relates to improving strength. So maybe you can talk about what is an isometric exercise and how it can help someone incorporating isometric exercises can end up helping someone when it comes to improving their strength. Well, absolutely. The easiest way I can explain isometrics, and I don't remember who said the quote, it's not my quote, but said, what's the heaviest weight that you can lift? The one that you can't. And that's what isometrics is all about. It is placing full body pressure against an immovable force. So a good example of that would be getting up, you know, the easiest way I can explain is going up to a wall and trying to knock a brick wall down. And you're not able to, but you're keeping building up that force and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing as though you would. That's what an isometric contraction is all about. What I find with isometric contractions is they work such the muscle to such a degree and they build up nervous strength as well as muscle strength and it's a very safe way to, to move a heavyweight poundage. In other words, you're moving something that can't be moved, but to your body, it's, it's having the same effect as lifting something extremely, extremely heavy. So you're preparing for those bigger gains in your strength. And uh, what a lot of people like about it is an isometric, if done correctly, will take your strength levels through the roof. If you are having a plateau area, let's say you're stuck at a certain weight and you want to get higher, 
you push through through isometrics. I've done that with bending many times, bending steel. You know, I try and bend something that I can't first, and then you go to something that's a little bit easier, and all of a sudden you can crank it down and bend it. Awesome. And so, I mean, so you kind of mentioned it. Maybe explain a little bit more. What is nervous strength? Like, ner- like you, you mentioned it when it comes to isometric strength and then nervous strength. Absolutely. Your nervous system really is, and you've heard many people probably talk about this in the past, and this is one of the things the book tries to emphasize. The nervous system is really the governor in your body. Um, when I was younger, and actually not younger, I still do it, we love to go go-karting. And those go-karts have a governor on the engine so you just don't go crazy and crash through walls or get into accidents. And the nervous system, in the same way, is a governor of your body of the strength level that you're allowed to have, the development that you're allowed to have. And so one of the things that Neuromass does is it builds not only strength as far as the muscle, just the pure brute strength, it also builds tendon as well as nervous strength. Your nervous system gets smarter. Uh, That's the best way I can explain it. By going through the three different distinct types of exercise, especially isometrics, your nervous system actually gets smarter and kind of releases the governing force on your body to help you make greater gains. Okay, cool, interesting. Now, you in the book, you have this thing called the neural rack, which I've never seen anything like this before. So if you, I'll pull out a picture in a second, but maybe you can kind of explain where did this idea come from of the neural rack and like why would someone uh, use the neural rack? Well, the neural rack is an idea that came out of really some of the old time strongmen as well as guys like Bruce Lee, uh, I believe, used devices similar to this. To do really good isometrics, uh, one of the things that's needed for the average person is a power rack. And you know what? Power racks are not very portable. And so one of the ideas we came up with is how can you have a portable or a portable power rack that you can take wherever you want to go, whether you're doing a body weight workout, a kettlebell workout, this thing will fit in the trunk of your car and you can do chest isometrics, you can do uh, bench isometrics, you can do pressing isometrics, squatting isometrics, right there. Squatting isometrics, deadlifting isometrics, and you can see the picture right here, uh, folks, at how you do that. You're resisting against an immovable force. It's got chains on the bottom, so you're standing on it, and you're really pulling against your own weight, trying to snap the chains, which obviously aren't going to snap. <laughs> But you can get all the benefits of a power rack in something that's portable and more flexible. And I, I've just loved that piece of equipment. We've tried it on all kinds of athletes. They love it. People that are trying to uh, recover from injuries a lot of times that can't go through a full range of motion, sometimes they'll just put them on the neural rack as just a whole isometric workout in itself while they recover range of motion issues. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, a lot of times when it comes to recovery and injury side of things, that's what you end up starting with is the isometric because it ends up being, it ends up being a safe contraction because there's no change in the range of motion happening. Absolutely. So a lot of times that'll where people will start, and that's it's interesting. I haven't heard of the, I've I've heard maybe once before, but not at that extreme where you are kind of representing a power rack and you're going to your maximum. And I'm I'm assuming that you try different ranges of motion when it comes to your deadlift or your squat in order to build strength through different ranges of motion in the knee, in the hip, in the back. Oh, right on, Rick. One of the areas what I like to do is where the trouble spot is. Is a lot of times where you're trying to break through that plateau spot, uh, particularly let's say you're working on the squat and your range of motion isn't an issue, but there are trouble spots as far as you can feel strength weaknesses You want to hit that spot, whether it's coming up out of the hole, a mid-range, or top. I find that people usually have one of those areas in a lot of the major lifts where they're struggling. Either it's in the lower position, the middle, or the upper. And what's cool about the neural rack, because it's chain, you can get to that exact spot. You know, you don't have to look for a pin in the rack. You can find that exact trouble spot where you're at, put your emphasis there, and build the strength around that. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Now... I have ne- in the book, I've never heard of anyone talking about the benefits of hitting yourself. Now, maybe you can talk about, you know, 
you know, what you mean by hitting yourself and how it can end up improving your results. Well, there's some crazy stuff in the book. The hitting actually <laughs> was first out of some of the stunts that I have done. Um, one of the things we do in our strongman, performing strongman shows, is I lay on the ground and my wife drops a bowling ball off a ladder onto my stomach, onto a glass plate. Um, I've laid under a bed of nails and had my wife jump rope on top of me. Um, I've tried to, we used to break two by fours uh, or two by twos on my shoulders. We've kind of done all these crazy impact feats for years. And so it was out of that 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 came, that training kind of became a birthing, I would say. But here's the importance of it. Your skin and it is all lined, your entire body is lined with nerves all over, little pressure points, meridians. Um, every time you even clap your hands, you are activating nerves within your body. And what happens is this, this prepares the nervous system for something to come by just slapping, you know, and, and there's some extreme techniques and there's some basic techniques. The simple slapping, tapping, hacking, cupping techniques actually wake up the nervous system and, and enliven, enliven it and prepare it for work. So instead of going into a workout just kind of cold, this wakes up the nervous system and the brain to say, hey, I've got to prep myself uh, for battle. And there's a tremendous amount of nerve endings, too, in the feet. And again, those these nerve endings, these are some of the governors as far as your strength goes. So by simply slapping, we found that people can a lot of times up their maximum weight, uh, that they can lift. Um, injuries, a lot of times, it, it, I wish I had time to talk about all the different things, but one of the secrets is this. <laughs> Simply by slapping some of these techniques, especially cupping, actually increase blood flow to the area. So even if you're injured, if you lightly cup that area, now I'm not a medical doctor, that's just my, uh, my way out here, but if you cup that area by lightly cupping, it's actually going to draw blood towards that area, help remove uh, toxins, it stimulates the lymphatic system, which is something we talk about a lot in the book. And so slapping has so many benefits. And in the morning, I just encourage people even to get up, just do a few taps. It'll wake your entire body up. It's a great energizer, and it's cheaper than any supplement you can get out there. <laughs> Very true. Now, two more things. Now, what do you do when it comes to you know warm up or preparation when it comes to your your workouts when it comes to you working out I mean I don't you jump in there and go max right off the top what do you do to kind of prepare your body for what you're gonna put it through it might be a feat of strength it might be a, a strong man it might be a, a crazy workout what do you do to prepare your body well to prepare my body what I do usually is some kind of joint mobility and there's so many fantastic programs out there that what I've done is I've kind of adapted things from all over and made it my own. Everybody has those rough spots, so I might go five or six reps on joint mobility on one part of the body where another part I might do 15 because we all have different trouble spots and different mileage on different parts of the body. But I always start with joint mobility. I also do some hip work with uh, bands and something called uh, the hip circle that's out right now. I use that. I do some dynamic warm up with those kind of bands, especially for the hips, because for me, having a lot of high mileage, the hips are always something I need to focus on and work on the heavy weights. So, and then I'll do a few body weight uh, sets, sometimes uh, some Hindu style push ups or dive bomber push ups, maybe some Hindu squats, some of those different types of things, depending on how the, the body is feeling. And then I kind of jump into the, the weight workout, not into maximal weights, but into usually the medium. That usually takes care of, and again, obviously we've already talked about it, I always do the neuro slap, the neuro stomp, and by then the body is ready to take on any challenge we're going to throw at it. Awesome. Now we talked about what you do before. Now you, you put your body through high mileage and high wear and tear and high stress. Now what do you do to kind of recover or repair that? Uh, I know you go through some ideas in the book and the, the you know if there's anything you want to add specifically but if you can kind of highlight the sauna side of things. Sure in the book we go through all different types of things as recovery. Um, cutting edge things such as binaural beats, isochronic tones and you can read about that in the book how you can kind of even get the brain into more of a relaxation state. Um, I know for a lot of people, one of the parts of recovery is just turning off 
the noise in your head, you know, being able to just relax and not be thinking about the 50 million things you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, but there's all kinds of things in there. And then sauna is something that I have done for years, especially when I have injury. The traditional sauna is something, I mean, steam room, I've done that for, for many, many years and gone in. And here's one of the things I found just recently in working with the book. There's new research out with something called far infrared technology, and I'm really excited about this technology because a normal sauna, what you do is you go in and it heats the air around you to heat up your body. The far infrared technology, what it actually does is it heats your body instead of heating the air. And the difference is this, is that you can go in and the temperature is much, much lower because you're heating your body directly instead of feeling like you just got cooked. Like I've been in the steam room so many times. I love the steam room, but it feels like it's cooking you, you know. Um, with the farm for red, you're actually heating the body directly. I've been doing research about this, and looking forward to getting one myself even because of all the research behind it. Um, it also removes toxins at a lower level of heat. And I believe it's about five to seven percent more toxins are removed from the body than uh, traditional sauna. It also expands the blood vessels, lowers blood pressure, which is a huge thing after workout. It heats up, again, the body from the inside. That pressure um, actually penetrates the tissue quite a bit more than a traditional sauna. The heat does. And so that's going to give you recovery. You know, we know the whole aspect. One of the things we do with recovery is heat or ice. Those type of things are big in recovery. Well, this causes the whole body to be able to heat up, to get that sweat out, detox. And again, this is a huge thing. It stimulates the lymphatic system. And so again, I, I'm kind of excited to learn more about this new technology that's going to take what I've done traditionally to the next level, which is the far infrared. Awesome. Okay, and then, I mean, that ends up being all the questions I have. Do you have any last-minute tips or points that you want to leave people with? Um, absolutely. I, I think that people a lot of times underestimate what they're capable of doing. And one of the things is the book is going to help people be able to push beyond their preconceived uh, limits. I think that too many times when it comes to strength and fitness, people have uh, what I call limiting belief systems of what they can do and how high they can excel. And so I would just say go in, make sure that you push, but make sure you recover and get ready for great, great things uh, as far as strength and athleticism. That's one of the major things I like to tell people is that for too long we've either trained just for strength or just for mass or just for athleticism. And what you get with neural mass is smart muscle combining them all together and uh, it's a fantastic way to train. Awesome. And where can people get more information about you, John? Well, I have a website called PressingTheLimits.com. And on there, you can see a lot of the strongman feats. There's videos there of me holding back motorcycles, <laughs> taking off in different directions, uh, all kinds of breaking stacks of bricks. There's all kinds of crazy stuff on there. Then I have another website called SubmitStrength.com, which is a strength equipment company that I started. Uh, with a friend of mine and then also they can just get a hold of me on Facebook and connect and just see what's going on and, and kind of share uh, their victories too. Awesome. So thank you very much for your time, John. And and make sure to take a look at Neuromass. It, it is, it's a really great book. You'll get a lot of excellent exercise ideas, some very unique training concepts when it comes to the recovery side of things, but also the, the training system is, is, is quite simple but uh, fascinating and as john says i mean he, he's got amazing results from it now so thank you very much for the interview and if you you know make sure you swing by exercises for injuries.com uh, enter in your injury or pain in the search box and what that'll do is there's a good chance that i have an article or video or interview f on your injury or pain that'll help you overcome that injury Second thing, if you're watching this on YouTube, head up above and hit subscribe. What that'll do is every couple days you'll get a video like this. It could be an interview like this, or it could be a video on myself talking about injury and pain. Or thirdly, it could end up being a, a video from one of my friends in the health and fitness uh, industry. Thirdly, make sure to head down below, hit like, and leave a comment or question for myself or John. 
Now that's it. Thank you very much for joining John and I. This is Rick Casselge from exercisesforinjuries.com saying take care and bye-bye.